How's it going? Um, this is uh, Oreo. And he's like s Oreo the cat is uh, decided to <clears throat> join the. Uh, I don't know if this is a podcast. I don't think so. I guess it's a vlog or something. Anyway, vlog cast. Pod vlog. I don't know. Anyway. <coughs> um, so I wanted to let y'all know about how, like, the early religions was. Like, how, like... Before it got all, like, uh, edited down and whitewashed and, like, sanitized and dumbed down and, you know, yeah. It's like, it was, um, the earth, like, at least according to either the main or one of the main Egyptian stories, uh, <coughs> the main creator God, other than, like, there's an ultimate creator God. Um, fuck, there's Oreo. And um, a, um, a, um, another kind of secondary creator God. And... That this secondary creator god is um is Kepper. So I'm not sure the first one is uh I don't know, his name has like a bunch of syllables in it. I'll uh Try to see if I can grab my bag without knocking the cat off the chair. And get my book from my bag. Let's see. All right, just a sec. So, I'm reading this book. I think it's going to be backwards for y'all because, uh, yeah, but anyway, <laughs> it's the Legends of the Egyptian Gods, Hieroglyphic Texts, and Translations by E.A. Wallace Budge. And I think Budge, yeah, I think Budge was like, just a really like work super like working class guy in London or someplace and he just somehow at a young age I think he um, <coughs> took an interest in languages started learning languages and then set about trying to learn Egyptian and became like you know um, one of or the like kind of preeminent uh, expert on it I mean but he's still like wrong <laughs> a lot of stuff but uh, but you know for his time he was considered to be like the you know the great systematizer and you know helped bring uh, Egyptology into uh, I mean I don't know they I mean he made mistakes, but the mistakes he made are pretty much common to almost all the Egyptologists. At least the ones that I that we tend to know about. Maybe there were a bunch of dissenters that there probably were a bunch of dissenters that got like buried, but I'm not sure how many. But um anyway, so in this it talks about um never 
Nebercher. Okay, so I think that's the original god is named Neb Nebercher. At least that's how it's spelled in this book. Um, and then he creates Kepera. And then Kepera does like the rest, basically. Kepera is like an aspect. It's like the form that Nebercher takes to create everything, I would say. Or that's what it makes it seem like. It's hard to really know the truth because it's like based on um, this guy's like translation and it's, uh, you know, it's based on the misinterpretations and everything. But, um, <coughs> but, but they, um, he says, Anyway, the point is, so like the the basically like the, the Big Bang, you could say like the Nebercher is like the just amorphous all, and the amorphous all takes the form of Capera, and then creates like everything, and Capera, Capera, I don't even know exactly how to pronounce it. I mean it's spelled usually K-H, so um, but like, they, um, but they, um, anyway, the point is, Kepper is a beetle, it's like a scarab, you know, like, I have a, one, I think, like, there's one hanging on that. Well, you can't really see it, but there's one like hanging on that light. <laughs> but um, anyway, so they, you know, there were little amulets like of keppers that were like, you know, one of the most ubiquitous ancient Egyptian, uh, you know, religious kind of, uh, you know, physical culture or whatever material culture um and uh but anyway so it's a beetle kepper is a beetle and the reason that it's the creator of the every <laughs> the universe basically um or of all the things in the universe is that it's it's the dung beetle and, um, yeah, it's a dung beetle. <laughs> and so the creator of the universe, like, basically just rolls, because it the, the dung beetle rolls its dung, like, in a ball, and it, like, pushes it, it, like, rolls it along or whatever, <laughs> and rolls it up hills or something. So anyway, that's supposed to be, <laughs> I think, the force that rises that that um yeah that that raises the uh the sun in the morning, for instance. And it seemed like at least in this story, it's basically the force that ri raises everything. So and since all the celestial bodies. Uh, I mean, virtually all, except maybe the fixed stars, but I don't know if those ultimately eventually change or not. But basically, most of the stars, celestial bodies, they are seen to, uh, you know, arise on the eastern horizon. And, you know, um, just like the sun itself, they set on the western horizon. And so... All of these things, the moon, the stars, the sun, the planets, are all seen as created by this dung beetle. They're basically all like balls of dung. I mean, it might not be as bleak as that because, or I don't know, or maybe it's just weirder than that because I think the dung beetle also can put their eggs inside the 
dung ball that they roll around. Anyway, so that's like the first like kind of sun god, creator god in that, <laughs> at least in that story, you know, in that tradition. And and that's a pretty prominent uh, Egyptian Egyptian uh, tradition. The concept of Keper as the as creator. Um, but also, it seems that um, it seems that before Geb. Um, well, it seems that there's an ancient, um, that there was probably an ancient earth <coughs> worship, earth religion, earth tradition that wherein like the earth was um, seen as a feline. And I think this relates to... Um, because you know, in the in the common in the like you know classical um, Egyptian tradition, the Earth is Geb, um, also called Seb, also manifesting as Sebek, as a crocodile crocodilian form, or as Geb or Seb as like a human form similar to Osiris, or basically identical to Osiris. Um, but, but I've seen one, you know, there's a certain type of, uh, of motif that is like an earth and sky motif, <coughs> you know, and, um, basically shows Geb or maybe sometimes Osiris, um, with, um, uh, Newt, the uh, sky goddess above, and but there are some versions of this which in which um, either Geb has a different form or is replaced by a different figure, um, but I think it still is, uh, you know, referring to terrestrial deities um ter terrestrial uh, representation and uh so there was one i found that showed uh bess who is a um feline deity and he's associated <laughs> with the nile um and yeah, I mean, it's, oh, I think he's associated with childbirth and he's associated with the Nile. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of deities are associated. I mean, arguably all the Egyptian deities are associated with the Nile. So it's kind of hard to parse out what exactly it was his role. Um, but when I see this, it tells me something because, you know, like I've never seen, for instance, Isis or... Um, you know, like Toth or something like in that role as like the earth god, like underneath Newt in one of those motifs. So the fact that we, that, um, that, you know, Bess is shown, even if it's just in this one instance that I've seen, but I'm sure if you see one of something like of an ancient you know, motif, you can pretty much guarantee, <laughs> guarantee it was probably one of hundreds or thousands of it uh, that are lost to history. But um, anyway, like, it, there was an ancient feline, like, re religion that was, um, like, there may have been an either an ancient global feline earth religion or uh or a local one that became global like you know basically they either it began as global or it or <laughs> it became global or semi-global through demic like dispersal 
but like um, basically Bess is a not sure if he's like a lion exactly or he's a tiger or something um, you know but his the the representations of Bess are very particular and stylized and symbolic and um, and mysterious and so the fact that I see him in this motif playing the role of Geb of the earth um, suggests to me that this may be like the Egyptian version of the an ancient you know feline earth deity that may relate to like the um, the feline um, like in America, like and China, um, there was a feline, yeah, basically f a, a feline uh, deity that may well have been an earth deity, may well have represented the earth. And uh, so, and you know, that's like really prominent in the, uh, maybe going back to the beginning, it's hard to extricate from the dragon um, representations in China and in America, uh, because a lot of the same styles are used um, to depict dragons and to depict, like, you know, felines like tigers or... Uh, um, jaguars but uh, you know it's clear that the jaguar was one of or the you know most important uh, deity for um, for you know Mesoamericans uh, or basically for the Olmecs and for the <coughs> Uh, the um i would say like the moche like the olmecs in mexico and uh the mayans that were heavily influenced or basically grew out of the olmecs in many ways um and then in south Am that's in mesoamerica and then in south america like um the moche the Going back to the Kupisnik, even maybe prior to the Kupisnik, um, but at least by that time, and the Chavin, um, certainly by by Kupisnik Chavin uh, times in South America, like in the Andes, um, <coughs> they had the same types of uh, jaguar <coughs> jaguar worship, you know, as uh, in Mesoamerica. So this is going back like uh, 3,000 years ago or so, I would say, like certainly, in, um, you know, yeah, I would say at least about 3,000 years ago and maybe like about 4,000 years ago for the early, early end of it. Um, and maybe earlier, but most of it would be around those uh, times. So, um, you know, it was, I mean, like, for one thing, in Mayan tradition, they talk about how the, uh, the, the, when they go to the underworld and they talk about how the, uh, jade, like jade is the, um, bones of, I think the bones of the earth, more or less. And so therefore it would make sense. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but I think I, that might be, uh, one of the, one aspect of the tradition is that Jade is associated. I know it's associated with bones of gods or something, but I think it was the bones of the earth god. So, like, 
therefore it would make sense that jade you know was like the sacred uh material for the um you know the ancient chinese <coughs> and the uh ancient mesoamericans uh, not really for the south americans they might not have had it in abundance or for whatever reason they used gold and uh you know other materials but um but for the mayans you know they used jade largely to i mean they recycled olmec uh jade pieces of these ancient um you know feline the jaguars so and the you know what they call the were jaguars which is like you know humanoid jaguars or jaguaroid humans or whatever and um you know like anyway i <laughs> i suspect that there's some ancient uh feline religion i know that like even the idea of like wearing um is it leopard or leopard skin or something was like the mark of like a of a priest in like a lot of different societies like including you know in america a certain type of priests had to wear that um so this may be i mean it's probably something that goes into like well into the paleolithic like well before agriculture this tradition um and the fact that it's in um in egypt and in china either yeah suggests i mean who knows what the exact origins of it but it could have been global at some point um but i was just thinking of that it, it it might make sense as an early, you know, as an early type of um, uh, concept <laughs> for the earth, because that I was just thinking that, you know, maybe the humans are viewed as, or basically all the animals, all the, yeah, all the animals on earth, basically viewed as fleas on a giant on a or you know the the equivalent of fleas on like a giant feline while this uh you know um dung beetle like pushes the dung sun <laughs> into the sky you know it's like that's the thing is a lot of early religion was very what modern people would think is crude or like people with uh victorian sensibilities or something but that's just how a lot of mythology was it's just they just used whatever worked whatever was serviceable um you know um metaphorically you know as a metaphor so yeah like that's what i'm thinking that there's a good chance one of the early religions was that we're all like fleas on a giant cat and then i don't know if it was part of the same tradition or just another early tradition that the sun <coughs> and all the planets and stars and everything were all are all pushed into the sky at dawn or whenever they enter the you know sky um on the eastern horizon by um by a dung beetle like rolling them rolling them along <clears throat> and you know part of that i think is the fact that they um that you know am i right i don't know does the sun move like slower for a second as it's rising Maybe that's part of what it is, but I don't know, or just their idea of like, what is it that's making this thing go? So they're thinking it must be this black, like, you know, dung beetle that we can't see that's just pushing it or, you know, like, not that they think that. I mean, that's the pathetic thing is that modern people, when they study this stuff, they're like, 
oh and then they really thought that in the rain comes from the this and like no but a lot of this is you know just metaphor and it's us that doesn't understand it's us that can't see the nuance and it's them that did what we're able to like you know have metaphor and still like understand that it was metaphor and also have like information transferred and understand what was what whereas we just <laughs> for a, mon a lot of modern people they just look at the whole thing and they're like they just think like oh this is some crazy person that was like making shit up and they don't understand that it was a highly technical uh, language of science um but yeah and i think the fact that the sun does seem to almost uh, slow down or stop for a moment as it's rising. Could be wrong about this, but if I'm right about that, that it does do that, I think that's the reason there's another story where it talks about that Isis made the sun stop so that she could like protect Horus. Um, because I think Isis is... Uh, lucifer like the uh, morning star um basically venus uh in the morning and you know she's called isis of the east um she is was worshipped in the morning and dawn um and you know it was common to divide uh you know Venus into two deities, of course, like that's why there is uh, Lucifer and Noctifer in the, uh, you know, Latin, in the Roman tradition. And <coughs> um, uh, Hesperidus and I uh, forget the other name in the Greek tradition. So, you know, Greeks and Romans both split. Um, venus into two deities and so <coughs> it shouldn't and so did the canaanites and uh yeah so it shouldn't be super surprising that the egyptians would do so as well um also the you know the mesoamericans did as well the mesoamericans split venus into like apparently into like a bunch of different deities you know according to the, the literature on this but um but in that in in that case uh that's like quetzalcoatl and stuff uh, a bit different although i don't i'm not really sure there's so much overlap but but um but yeah, like, so Isis is Isis of the East. Her sister is Nephthys of the West. Um, so that's like Noctifer, like Venus set, <coughs> Venus setting. And, um, and, you know, like that, that was known to some people, like the fact that the, her, um, like the rituals that were dedicated to her were basically based on the um, movements of Venus. And, and then together, like her and her sister, Nephthys, combined to form Mat, M-A-A-T. So that's like Venus altogether. Um, so anyway, these are some things about like the early religion and uh, how it was weird and it was about dung beetles and I think we might have all been fleas on a cat and that Venus is Lucifer, who is Venus, or I mean Isis is Lucifer, probably. I'd be very fucking surprised if this is not the case she's even very her name is very etymologically close to the actual name of of uh ishtar which is the you know semitic like babylonian <coughs> version of inanna which is venus so but it's sad that like you know nobody knows that you can read there's literally thousands of books written about her about isis and 
very very few if any like mentioned that anyway um getting cut off here but yeah i think it's cutting me off so leave it at that so take care and uh, um